Welcome to the SR Nexco video tutorials. This chapter shows you how to create a metal supported posterior bridge with SR Nexco. It is recommended that you use a full wax up. Create a wax up that is fully contoured according to the anatomical tooth shape. Next, fabricate silicone keys of the anatomical tooth shape. You will use the silicone keys to check the space conditions during contouring. Subsequently, reduce the portions to be veneered and check them with the silicone keys. After casting, carefully divest and sandblast or pickle the framework. Subsequently, fit the framework on the model. Mechanical retentions are generally beneficial and recommended because they support the chemical bond between the metal and composite. After you have separated the framework from the casting sprues, you can finish it. Create a chamfer in the cervical area using a tungsten carbide burr. When you fabricate a metal supported restoration, it is particularly important that you condition the framework appropriately before you apply the veneering material. Carefully blast the framework with aluminum oxide of a grit size between 80 and 100 microns using a pressure of 2 to 3 bar. After blasting, remove blasting medium residue by tapping it off with an instrument. After blasting with aluminum oxide, do not clean the framework with steam or an air gun. Immediately after having tapped off the residue, apply SR Link bonding agent using a disposable brush. Please note that SR Link should be allowed to react on the metal surface for three minutes. It is fundamental that you adhere to the layering diagram to ensure the success of the restoration. To achieve an appropriate shade match, a minimum SR Nexco veneering thickness of one millimeter is required. The application of SR Nexco retention flow is optional. This material easily flows into the spaces under the retention beads due to its low viscosity. This measure increases the effectiveness of the bond. Apply retention flow to the undercuts of the retention beads with a brush before you apply the first layer of opaquer. After that, light cure retention flow for 20 seconds with a quick pre-curing light. Now, apply the first layer of opaquer in a thin coating using a brush. Pre-cure the opaquer for 20 seconds with the quick. If you do not use SR Nexco retention flow, apply the first layer of opaquer in a thin coating to the metal framework. Subsequently, pre-cure each segment for 20 seconds with the quick. Apply the second layer of opaquer in such a way that the metal framework and, above all, the retention beads are now entirely and fully covered with opaquer. Subsequently, pre-cure each segment again for 20 seconds using the quick. Conduct the final polymerization of the opaquer in a Lumamut light furnace for 11 minutes using program P2. Isolate all areas of the model which may come into contact with SR Nexco before you begin the dentin and incisal layering procedure. Use SR Model Separator to seal these areas. Apply the material in a thin coating, allow it to react for a short time, and remove excess with oil-free compressed air. Thoroughly remove the resulting opaque inhibition layer with a disposable sponge. Make sure that the opaque surfaces are free of residue. After you have removed the inhibition layer, you may characterize or modify sections of the opaque surface with SR Nexco stains. It is recommended that you apply a thin layer of stains to the marginal and interdental areas, particularly if space is limited. This measure allows you to enhance the in-depth shade effect. After that, Pre-cure SR Nexco stains for 20 seconds with the quick. Now you are ready to commence the layering procedure proper.
The individual SR Nexco paste materials can be either applied according to the layering diagram or individually. Press the first layer firmly into place to achieve an effective bond between the composite and the opaque surface. After that, build up the layers step by step. To your advantage, you may contour the basal surface of the pontic area with pontic fill. Furthermore, occlusal dentin is particularly suitable for enhancing the occlusal shade effect. As you build up the restoration, consistently pre-cure the Nexco materials with the quick for 20 seconds each segment. Design the dentin body in such a way that the shape of the mamelons is outlined in the dentin. In particular, make sure to save enough space for the subsequent application of the incisal and transpa materials. SR Nexco stains may be applied into the fissures, if desired. As usual, complete the incisal area step by step using incisal material. Please note that the layer thickness of the veneering material should be 1 mm to achieve an optimum shade reproduction. After the layering procedure has been completed, all areas must be pre-cured. Before you conduct the final polymerization step in the Lumamat light furnace, apply SR gel to the Nexco surface. Make sure that all areas are covered and the layer is not too thick. Please observe the polymerization parameters specified in the SR Nexco instructions for use to conduct the final polymerization of the restoration. After you have completed the polymerization procedure, completely remove SR gel from the restoration using running water or a steamer. Finish the restoration with cross-cut tungsten carbide burrs, fine diamonds, and flexible discs. Create a true-to-nature shape. Smooth the SR Nexco surface using customary polishers, such as rubber polishers or silicone wheels. Subsequently, establish a lifelike surface texture in the buckle area. Next, pre-polish the surface using universal polishing paste and a goat hair brush. Pay particular attention to the crown margins, interdental areas, occlusal surfaces, and the basal rest of the pontics. Use a cotton or leather buff to achieve a natural high-gloss finish. Please refer to the instructions for use for further details on the application method. With its lifelike aesthetics and vibrant expression, the final result is impressive.